Okay, so in this final video of this, this series about uh, components and assemblies and joints, I'm going to recreate this design of uh, a simple crank that allows a, a shaft to turn. And this will in no way be a tutorial. I'll do this as quickly as humanly possible and uh, with the idea that you'll try and struggle your way through it with some knowledge about how to uh, create components and assemblies and see where you get stuck. So the first thing I'm going to do is create a component and I'll call this the box. I will create a sketch on the front work plane and just make a rectangle of some dimension. I'm not paying any attention to uh, sizes here and I'm going to create an offset to make that kind of hollow box shape. I will then extrude this and hit OK. So I've got uh, a component and a timeline in which I drew a sketch and I've extruded. I'm going to switch back to my main component and then create a new one called shaft. And from here I'm just going to create a cylinder. Uh, I'll create that cylinder on maybe this back plane here of the uh, component or even better than that let me hit escape anytime it's possible it's better to create things um, that have based off of references that are in my component so basing it off of another component is not as good as basing it off of something like the main work plane so uh, I'm going to just create that shaft here and I'm going to drag out so it's sticking out and hit OK so that's my second component. That's it. I'm going to go back to the main component, create a new one, and I'll call this one the um, crank. Not sure that's the best name, but uh, for this one, I will again create a sketch. And uh, I'll create it actually this time. I will create it in relationship to this other component, and I will make a box here. And uh, I'll also make, a, well, that's it. I'll make a box. <laughs> and then I will extrude this in a bit, hit OK. So what I'm doing is in each of these cases, I'm creating collisions between these separate components. And that's OK, so I'll resolve those in the end. I will go back to my main component, create one more component, which is called the handle. And again, I will create a cylinder inside this component. I'll create it on the back surface of this one and I will just pull it out this way. So that's it. I've got all my components and if I go back to the root component I can see them all together and now what I'm interested in is first of all this is just colliding with that and it and this is just colliding with that blue piece as well. They're not actually there's no hole in there they're just smashed into each other. So the first thing I'm going to do is modify combine and say I'd like to cut this using this as a tool body and this as a tool body. I want to keep tools so that those things don't disappear afterward and when I hit OK there's an interesting thing that happens on the timeline which shows that it happened in that component it happened to that blue component so even though I didn't select that component first it knows that it's in reference to that component and if I click on uh, activate that component you can see that's where that action happened so we don't always have to switch to the component when we want to do something to it it's really just in that beginning phase while we're creating them that it's really important so I'm also going to do the same thing here, modify, combine, and choose the body, uh, this box body, and then the tool body will be the shaft. Again, make sure I keep tools and hit OK. So now if I had that shaft, I can see I've got holes everywhere. Again, if I really wanted this shaft to be able to slide in here, I'd have to click on that face and go to offset faces uh, and make that a little bit larger than it's supposed to be. But I'm not going to worry about that right now. Uh, this final detail is um, how do I create a, an assembly from all of this? How can I make joints? And so far we've been using the joint command which actually takes two things that are in two totally different places and <laughs> two totally different places and snaps them together. So we remember that from our box example they were separate and they got snapped together. Well this is our opportunity to see a really interesting and shortcut uh, time saver which is uh, the as-built joint so everything is already in the right place so if I do an as-built joint I can make joints really easily I can say it's a rigid joint between this one and this one uh, 
and hit OK. I'll swipe up with my right button to do the same thing. There's a rigid joint between this component and this component and hit OK. Swipe up again and there's a revolute joint between this component and this one. And then for this one, it does ask me for a little more information. Where do, what are they spinning around? Like where's the actual point that they're uh, revolving around? And so I could choose the end of this. Uh, if, I, if I'm being picky and I really want it to be right there at that place, uh, notice it's really hard to select that. So this is where I'm going to show you another trick. If I hold down the Command button uh, on the Mac, it will make sure that it's able to select on that face. So it's not leaving that face. So by clicking there, it's actually, oh, that's bad. Uh, so uh, what I'll do is select them in the correct order, which is to say this revolves around this, and then choose that same place. Okay, and I hit OK, and, and at this point, if I double click on that joint, uh, I should be able to see the kind of motion that I want. It's not very easy to see because there's no uh, pattern or texture or holes or anything on this shaft. So I want to show you one more detail that we haven't gone over, which is to insert a decal. And I will choose um, a checkerboard pattern and I can choose this face and just stretch it out so that it reaches over the whole thing. Uh, chain faces means that it will wrap around to the front and back and so on, but I can uncheck that and again just make sure it's big enough to cover everything and then hit OK. Uh, so now when I revolve that joint, there it goes. That's the whole thing. Uh, see if you can recreate this and uh, that would be a good challenge for you to understand how to create components, how to create multiple components, how to create an as-built joint, so joints that are already in position, uh, and also using combine to make sure that uh, all of these holes are actually there and not just, you know, these things sitting against each other. We know how to tell if that's the case by going to in inspect and choosing interference. This will tell us if there were actual places where these were just interfering and there wasn't actually a hole for this shaft, for example. So that's a good use of that. And uh, also a good opportunity to try out the decal function and to do the one thing that I didn't do, which is offset faces in these holes so that they actually could work in real life. So that those holes are slightly larger. At that point, you will have pulled together a lot of new skills to be able to make an assembly of moving parts relating different components through the use of joints.